Welcome to Wet Pixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon. I'm the editor of Wet Pixel, and I'm joined by Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hi, Adam. Good to see you. Nice to be here. Good to see you too. Um, you've got splendid uh, sun patterns, sun ripples, and background. Um, wonderful. Yeah, my background today. I took this photo in 1999 when wow. you used to be able to stay on Sipperdan Island, and before diving one morning, I got up early and went out for a snorkel with my um, Nikonos RS and the 20 to 35 mil zoom as um, wow. the camera I was using that day. And this is one of the pictures I took before going out diving in the early morning. Fantastic. Yeah, bit of history. Wonderful. <laughs> um, so, sort of speaking somewhat about history. Um, so Nikon released a roadmap for their Z um, lens releases um, recently. Um, so we thought we might discuss that, Alex. So so what did you notice in the in the roadmap that excited you, Alex, or interested you? Um, there was quite a lot I took out of this. Hmm. Um, and I think the first thing I take out of this is as a Nikon user, and we're both Nikon users, so we kind of watch these announcements closely, is yeah. the fact that almost all of this has come since Nikon last launched an, an SLR. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you can have no doubt if you want the latest technology and the best technology from Nikon, you know, they're pouring all their resources and effort not into SLRs. Uh, yeah. I know in the last few days there's been, a, you know, Nikon have sort of probably been aware of this and have said, well, we are going to produce two new SLRs next year. Um, yeah. They haven't given any details, yet they've given all this detail on the Zs. So, yeah. you know, it's clear this is where their priorities lie. And for photographers, you know, and I think it's true of Canon as well, and it's, it's true of Sony, you know, don't keep, don't look down your nose at these mirrorless options, you know, because actually this is where the best camera tech, the best image quality is, is going, really. And yep, so, yep. May, you know, so, you know, keep an open mind towards them is all I'd say, is I still prefer to shoot with an SLR, but I'm, I'm keeping that open mind. Um, anyway, the big things I took away from this, um, so sorry to go off topic, are the two new macro lenses. We've got a, a 50 mil macro lens, which yeah. is actually the same angle of macro lens I used to have on the Nikonos RS. Um, yeah. Nikon haven't made 50 mil since, and they've always made 60 mils. So that's really quite a wide macro lens. And they've yeah. also got a, a, a 105, so a classic 105, but both native to the Nikon Z system, both announced as forthcoming. And I think for me, that's really exciting Yep. Because I've not shot macro with the Z series, yep. but I know you, when you shot macro with the Z series, the first generation of Z series cameras, you were quite disappointed by the autofocus. And yep. that was having to use um, F mount lenses on an adapter with the system. I think hopefully with the new generation of cameras and lenses specifically designed for them, finally Z mounts might produce some really exceptional macro autofocus and image quality capabilities. And that could be really, really exciting. So those yeah, are the two that stand out for me, the, the two macro lenses. We're definitely a transition at the moment. And, and obviously, the, 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 as, as, as you say, Alex, the, the future is, is undoubtedly mirrorless. In fact, I, I, you know, Nikon would say so, I think. Mm. Um, well, they have said so. Um, but um, one of the things that possibly, because we're in a transition, we're in the situation where we're busy trying to use older lenses, F-mount lenses, with adapters on, on the mm. newer bodies. And, and, and the new Z6 um, and 7 Mark II, um, and my understanding is that the Canon R5 falls into this as well. Um, you know, th these, these, um, the, um, the clever bits in some ways is to do with the way the actual lens mount flanges are designed, and, and ultimately they're inherently optically better than um, than the the comparative um, Nikon F mount or, or Canon EF mount um, um, options. So, so because they're big and because they're close to the actual sensor, yeah, whereas on an some... SLR you've got to have a great big mirror contraption between yeah. sensor and the the mount. Yes, yeah, so it's not simply a question. They've just kind of redesigned. So they haven't just redesigned an SLR or made a mirrorless camera. They've gone back to the drawing board and said, well, how can we how can we maximize the designs on the mirrorless? Um, and, and obviously, the, one of the, 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 the when we then add a, a legacy lens, what's now a legacy lens to that, we lose some of those advantages. Um, whereas, obviously, if we use the Z mount lenses, the designer lenses, we, we don't. We're buying into those those optical advantages as well, design advantages. So um, you're uh, not stepping back to prehistoric. You're stepping back just to being the same image quality as the SLR is giving you. Yeah. So it's, and, it's still, and, you know, a lot of us are pretty happy with that. So it's not. Yeah, like, I, I'm not. It's just you're talking about very good and excellent. 
Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, it's not, it's not, you know. Well, I, maybe it's a question you should ask yourself. You know, if you if you are if you are happy with what your current camera system is putting out, do you need to upgrade to another system? Well, possibly not. And I think that's maybe maybe a good question to ask as well. But there's no doubt in my mind that if you're if you're going down this um, system, going down this route of of, of of changing to mirrorless, um, and, and obviously we could bring the other mirrorless manufacturers like Sony and Panasonic and all the other guys into it as well. And um, you really need to be certain that you're getting the best out of whatever system that you're you're, you're planning to use. Um, the obvious issue for me still with the Zs with this new roadmap is the lack of a fisheye. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, um, so, you know, we're still going to be, and you know, again, we have great solutions. Obviously, we can't use the Takina 1017. Um, with the Zs, so so we lose that as a lens option, and we won't focus. I think that's right, now. Alex. Have you, have you yeah, any, that? Any, yeah, you can't use the adapter with any screw-driven autofocus Nikon lens, which is not just the 10 to 17. It's also the Nikon um, 16 mil. It's the Sigma 15 mil. It's right. RS 13 mil if you have an adapter, and yeah. if you're using um, the the Z um, the Z um, the crop sensor one, the Z 50, I think it's called. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah can't use the 10.5 either so right, you need right. a an afs focusing lens which is the 8 to 7 to 8 to 15 now that is the best of the bunch in many ways so course, it's yeah. not a big downside but yeah it's i think it'll be really exciting when nikon make a um a one that's dedicated to the z system of fisheye yeah and it's i, I, I mean it's, sorry that that isn't on this roadmap. So this roadmap doesn't make any mention of, of, of a fisheye. And I have to say the same is true of both um, Canon and Sony. So so in both cases, mm. I'm aware obviously we're talking about the nickel roadmap, but in both cases there is currently no native fisheye option. So so you're relying on using other mm. lenses with adapters. Um, it's yeah. a pity that someone like Sigma hasn't spotted that as a gap in the market and, and made one that could be used across those three because they're all quite similar. I think it'd be quite easy to make one that would work on all three, mm. um, which is, a, yeah, it's a pity. I think, yeah, the, the wide angles that I can see on this roadmap that I've got in front of me, um, I've just pulled it up and had a look at it on my computer. Um, there's the 14 to 30 mil, mm. which I, I've shot on the Z, and it's a very nice lens, particularly behind the, the WACP2 that I shot it with. There's mm. also a 14 to 24, which I've not tried. Mm. Um, and there's also a 16 to 50, which is a little looks a little bit more kit lensy, uh, um, but very 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 versatile um, yeah. lens. Um, but Could all three like of those are, you know, one you know the, the 14s are 120 and the 16s yeah. are 110 degrees, so they're you know they're wide lenses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean certainly the the with the WCP2 the the uh, 14 to 30 is, is it's 130 degrees or something it's very very wide isn't it it's yeah. exceptionally wide yeah it's stretched uh, a little bit more i think with the with the w it's yeah mm. so 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 yeah i mean i think i think it's uh, you know it's a very interesting development the fact that we now have macro uh, native macro options on the z mount system um as far as i know there's no equivalent with um yeah. canon but there is an equivalent with sony sony have a 90 mil macro which is a very nice lens um so so um that, that that's a, that's a, for sony full frame and and um, crop sensors so so obviously there is that option with the sony's mm. um, and panasonic's has quite a few isn't there so there's uh, yeah but i think what's nice is that nikon is not just saying oh we're going to make one macro lens and if you want to get you know on land you just can move further away or get closer in they're actually yeah. making two and although I don't know the details of them, a 50 and a 105, that, that's a really nice combination because, you know, if you want to do black water, you don't want to be stuck on a 105 or a 100 mil. Um, so, yeah, really, uh, that is really good news for underwater photographers. Yeah, great. Um, and the other news that Alex um, mentioned, alluded earlier, just to confuse us further. So, so Nikon made an announcement stating that they were concentrating on pro and mirrorless. That was their two... Um, places they were investing resources for development in, in SLR um, terms. Uh, well, they said pro SLR, yeah. So, so sorry, yeah, pro SLR and mirrorless. So, obviously, we've seen that the, the new versions of the Z Z62 and Z72, with what we gather is much improved autofocus over the original um, Z6 and Z7. Um, mm. But they've also trailed this idea that there is going to be two new SLR bodies. Um, coming out next year which really makes life very complicated because uh, it makes anyone's roadmap for the future because obviously if those are for example a new version of the d850 and d500 then um, that makes it 
very exciting for those of us with, with large amounts of, of older F mount lenses. Um, yeah. Of course, we, we don't know. Um, so possibly what's what's on your shopping list for the, the D860, Alex? Well, uh, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it will be interesting what they call it, because traditionally they might call an upgrade an S, yeah. you know, like D500S or a D850S, yeah. or they might, you know, add some numbers to it, or they might follow what they've done with the Zs and call them Mark Twos. Yeah, you might, know, so, yeah. so what they're called is, is, is one area of confusion. <laughs> yeah. um, it would be nice if they followed what they did with the Zs and actually use the same camera chassis and just upgrade the internals. In other words, so that we can put them in the same housings. That yeah. hasn't typically been Nikon's way. It's no. been, you know, it has occasionally happened D300S fitted in D300 housings, D7200 fitted in D7100 housings. Um, but over, generally over time, Nikon have always changed the, the camera chassis and moved the buttons around so we can't use them in the same housings. I have to say, I think if they fit in the same housings, it's a very different question to if it's a whole new housing. And then if it is a whole new housing, you then need to understand exactly what this upgrade is. Yeah, um, but yeah. it's perhaps anyone who's sitting on the fence about buying a, a Nikon D850 or D500 right now, they might want to sit on the fence a little while longer until they hear a bit more on this news. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Because, of course, we do have the D6. And the D6 does have, by all accounts, better autofocus than, than the D5, D850, D500. So, <laughs> um, so this would be you know, even that in a... In a D850 type body would be a would be a, an interesting thought. Anyway, mm -hmm. wonderful. Thank you, Alex. Um, you can search Alex's um, imagery by camera type, I think, on your website. Yeah, you can. Yeah, I don't think the old film ones are on there. Um, so, like the the Nikonos RS picture I'm sitting in front of, you won't find. But yeah, any any digital camera that writes um, to the metadata, you can search on. So wonderful. you can see Z pictures and you can see D850 pictures, etc. That's great. So thank you very much, Alex. Um, and thank you to all for watching. Thanks to Backscatter Photo and Video for sponsoring this episode. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Please feel free to add your comments about the future of, uh, of imaging um, and cameras in the comment section below. And uh, drop us a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.